So how many of you all can relate of a family member or even yourself that plays the lottery? But what if I told you that you don't have to play the lottery to become a millionaire? You see, there's a bunch of guidelines, values, principles, instructions written in the book of the Bible. And I'm gonna break it down for you in this episode of the new episode series here in the 7th Year Squad called the Wealth and Wisdom Series starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jeter. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas, and Happy New Year 2022. May your dreams come true in 2022. So it cracks me up to see a guy become a millionaire in Powerball. Now, some of you guys are like, yeah, I wish it was me, I wish it was me. I, I totally get it. But did you realize that the odds of winning the Powerball is crazy? It's like one in 292 million. So as of tonight, we are studying a new series on the Seven Fair Squad YouTube channel called Wealth and Wisdom. And if you like the sound of that, please click like and make sure you share this video with other people who also want wealth and wisdom in 2022. Okay, so why pay attention to this book of the Bible called Proverbs? Why pay attention to this writings, these writings, these sayings from this king named King Solomon? Well, let me give you a little bit of a fact of who King Solomon was. He is the son of King David, many of you know, who slayed Goliath in the Bible. And he became the third king of Israel at 12 years old. King Solomon is known for his wisdom, then wealth. And he took people of Israel through 40 years of what they call the golden age. His downfall was women. Women led him away from God had 700 wives and 300 concubines slash mistresses. Considered as the richest king who ever lived, set to receive $40 billion in gold every year as tribute bring his fortune to $2.2 trillion. Now, King Solomon has been known to have written three books in the Bible. And these books are Song of Solomon, which is the wisdom regarding his relationship between God and God's people. Number two, the book of Ecclesiastes, which is King Solomon's outlook on life and the world thought to be written later in King Solomon's reign. Number three, the book of Proverbs, which we'll be referencing over these next 31 weeks, is a collection of sayings that are wide in range, but packed with poetic wisdom, wealth, and prosperity. So if you have a Bible handy, my suggestion is, as we go through the series, you bust out your Bible, crack it open right basically into the middle of the Bible, and you'll find after Psalms, you find this book called Proverbs. And uh, we'll go over chapter one today. And uh, here's five lessons I learned from reading Proverbs chapter one. And just keep in mind, every week we'll break down every chapter of the book of Proverbs for the next 31 weeks. Okay, number one, five lessons from Proverbs chapter one. So therefore you can win the financial powerball of your life and be a millionaire. Number one, you must have a foundation. Proverbs chapter one, verse seven, it reads like this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, despise wisdom and discipline. See, bottom line, you have to have a foundation of why you're doing what you're doing. If you say, Matt, I got an aspiration of becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. Great, then why? For what, just to become a millionaire? Just so you can go buy Gucci and Versace and cars and homes, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with material goods. There's nothing wrong with having possessions. But is that it though? Is that what defines you? Because according to Proverbs, you have to serve a purpose greater than your own individual selfish earthly desires. King Solomon says, now God, this is what I really want. It says here in 1 Kings, God give me wisdom. And God says, goodness gracious, look at this young kid. Look at this young ruler. Look at this young king. He says, you know what? And by the way, I'm paraphrasing. He says, not only will I give you wisdom, I'm going to give you everything that you didn't ask for. Thus starting the beginning of the golden age for the people of Israel. And when there's a wise king, the people prosper. When there's wise ruler, people are happy. When there's wise counsel at the top, there's peace in the land. So if you say, Matt, no matter what I do in this life, in 2022 and beyond, if I'm going to be destined to become a first generation millionaire, please affirm with me in the comment section below. I serve a purpose bigger than me. I am serving a purpose bigger than me. Sometimes we've seen people with a lot of money whether it be just simple as a tax refund at the beginning of this year, having a bonus at their job. And next thing you know, three, four, five years later, they're broke. They're in debt. They're filing bankruptcy. You're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, weren't you just rich? 
Weren't you just wealthy? Do you know why they reverted back? Because the original problem was not solved. The original holes and leaks in a person's character in understanding about wealth, wisdom, and prosperity had major leaks in it. It was never addressed, it was never shored up, it was never plugged up. So therefore, money, when it comes by, if it's not based on a purpose greater than yourself, it's not based on values, it's not based on principles, it's just based on selfishness and greed, guess what? Money's gonna come to you and float right through you. And the only one that wins is not you, it's everything and everywhere that you spent money at. Why most people look at King Solomon, not only as the richest king who ever lived, but also the wisest, because he built his reign on values and principles and revered God. He was in awe of God. And the bottom line, he honored God. And when he honored God, God then honored him. Number two, second lesson. Listen, observe, and learn. Let's read in Proverbs chapter one, verse eight through nine, it reads like this. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. There will be a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. How many of you guys love jewelry? How many of you guys have seen people there with pendants and crosses, earrings, right? How many people do you see look good out there? Whatever it is that they're wearing, looking sharp. Well. What King Solomon here is saying that if you listen, you observe, and you learn, and you invoke wisdom, guess what's gonna happen to you? You're just gonna shine just like that, but not from the outside, but more so from the inside. You're gonna understand how to look at things that have a basically a Midas touch to whatever business opportunity, endeavor, or career that you choose. No matter what you see, conflict, challenges, you're gonna see the wisdom, you're gonna invoke wisdom, and you get through these challenges like a champion. But if all it is, is you having an external source of wealth, a superficial source and desire to become a millionaire, well, guess what? It's gonna come through you and fly off of you because you didn't invoke wisdom, you didn't listen, you didn't observe, and you didn't learn. And so all these things going on right now, to see it through the lens of an entrepreneur, to see it through the lens of King Solomon, to see it through the lens of how God wants you to invoke wisdom and look at investments, look at business opportunities, look at career changes, look at difficult decisions in your life through this type of wisdom, it's gonna allow you to rise above the situation where most people are just barely looking to survive. Number three, be careful who you listen to. So if you listen, observing and learning, you also have to be careful of who you listen to. Let's look at Proverbs chapter one, verse 10 through 19, it reads like this. My son, if sinners entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let's lie and wait for somebody's blood. Let's waylay some harmless soul. Let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole like those who go down to the pit. We will get all sorts of valuable things in and fill our house with plunder. Throw in your lot with us and we will share a common purse. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths. For the feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net in full view of all the birds. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They waylay only themselves. Such is the end of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the lives of those who get it. See, I've seen this many times already. Now, it's 2022. I've been an entrepreneur now for 23 years. I've seen a dot-com bubble in 01. I've seen the Great Recession in 08, 09. Now I've seen us the last couple years throughout this pandemic. I've seen all sorts of craziness. I've seen all sorts of greed. I've seen all sorts of opportunities that people jumped on hoping to get rich quick. This is the thing, Matt. This is the thing, Matt. This is it. Get into it or you're going to lose out. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. And guess what? Long term, they made a lot of money in the short term, but guess what happened long term? Now they're working and getting a job. They're in bankruptcy. They're in divorce. They're in ruin. And what has my business decisions done? It may have been not quick as they have been, but it's been slow and steady, and it's been in a situation where, yes, I've had explosive gains, I've had explosive gains, but it's built on foundational truths, wisdom, principles, that even though I felt I missed out on a lot of things, because I recognized they were just trends, they were just philosophies, and guess what happens? Trends and philosophies change. Principles don't. So you have to look into things, you have to look into the matter, which, by the way, we'll be unpacking over these next 31 weeks, on how King Solomon gives you counsel on how to do such things. So if you affirm with me at this point, said, Matt, I'm gonna be careful, put it in the comment section below. I am careful who I listen to. I am careful who I listen to. Put it in the comment section below. Which leads me to number four. Don't chase money, chase wisdom. Let's look at Proverbs chapter one, verses 20 to 27, and then 28 to 31, it reads like this. Wisdom calls aloud in the street. She raises her voice in the public squares. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out, in the gateways of the city, 
she makes her speech. How long will you simple ones love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery? How fools hate knowledge? If you had responded to my rebuke, I would have poured out my heart to you and made my thoughts known to you. But since you rejected me when I called and no one gave heed when I stretched out my hand, since you ignored all my advice and would not accept my rebuke, I in turn will laugh at your disaster. I will mock when calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you. Wow, that was deep. See, there's a price to pay. Which one, by the way, which one are you in this one? Are you the simple one? Are you the mocker? Or are you the fool? Which one are you? Are you the simple one? Are you the fool? Or are you the mocker? More importantly, are you listening? Let's go to verse 28 to 31. It reads like this. Then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me. Since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, since they would not accept my advice and spurned my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. Ouch. <laughs> In other words, you can have all your different reasons for doing what you're doing. Knock yourself out. But if you didn't invoke wisdom, if you didn't seek counsel, if you didn't ask God, if it wasn't based on values and principles and have a foundation, well, guess what? You now have to deal with your consequences. Well, I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me. Great. Do you. But is it based on values and principles? God, by the way, guys, I deal with this every day of my life for the last 22, 23 years. 80% of the people I've talked to, educating them about personal finance is because I see a spiritual battle going on above their heads. Therefore, I'm going to attack that spiritual battle with questions and attempting to evoke wisdom on the people that we're helping in our financial workshops. But I see it all the time. My guys see it all the time. This is an area that deal with money, possessions, success, is a huge area that the enemy loves to attack you in, that loves to control you in, to keep you from serving and honoring God in all your ways and all your deeds because the devil wants you to serve him, actually. The devil wants you to serve Gucci. The devil wants you to serve Visage. The devil wants you to serve these brand name companies. They, the devil wants to call you a consumer versus a producer of good. And so when you're looking at things this way, is not chasing the money, but chasing wisdom. So if you're affirm with me at this point, that you want to invoke this in your life, put it in the comment section below. I do not chase money, I chase wisdom. I do not chase money, I chase wisdom. Put it in the comment section below if you affirm that with me. And number five, peace and safety versus rebellion and complacency. Let's look at Proverbs chapter one, verse 32 and 33. It reads like this. For the waywardness of the simple will kill them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear or harm. So which path do you want to choose? Which path do you want to choose? God is giving you a choice. He's not going to force you in a certain way. And King Solomon realizes this, that God gave King Solomon a path. Do you want this or do you want that? Do you want peace and safety or do you want to do it your own way? I'm going to do me. By the way, that's probably one of the most cautious things I've heard in the last 10, 15 years. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me. Okay. I want, by the way, I would want you to do you. I want you to do whatever you feel God has purposed in your life and the dream that God has given you specifically. No, nobody understands, but you understand because God gave it to you. Sure, I want you to do you. But make sure when you say do me, is it purposed? Is it intentional? Is it grounded? Or is it said in a rebellious way? Is it said in a complacent way? Is it said in a way that you don't feel that you have to listen to anybody or anything? That's where you got to be careful. Yes, we want you to do you. We want you to spread your wings. We want you to go out there and, and do you and give glory to God and honor him and know that, man, all the stuff that you experience in life is because of him. Yes, we want you to do you. But you just got to be careful. That thin, fine line between peace and safety, right across the way there is also rebellion and complacency. So if you were firm with me that you're going to follow peace and safety, put in the comment section below, I am choosing peace and safety, not rebellion and complacency. So as I wrap up, a few things to keep in mind. The basic meaning of wisdom is this. In Hebrew, it's chokma, from the verb chokam, to be wise, is the ability to judge correctly and to follow the best course of action based on knowledge and understanding, not emotions. Wisdom is the ability to see something from God's viewpoint. Because wisdom is God's character 
the many practical affairs of life. So if you're saying, man, I want to invoke more wisdom in my life. I want wisdom. I want understanding. How do I do it? So here's three questions to ask yourself on how to actually do this. Number one, what principle based on this decision is being recommended? Number two, what vice does this warn you about? Number three, what value should approve this? What principle is being recommended? What vice does this warn you about? And number three, what value should approve this? So here's the bottom line. There's not a specific A, B, C, or D because life, as many as see it, there's different perspectives. I can't come into your life and say, hey, do this, do that, or, or, or King Solomon can say, do this or that, but King Solomon is saying, hey, listen to these values and principles. Here's are certain questions that will guide you to making the right decision. You just can't say, hey, listen, what we do in my situation? Well, there's one side, then there's the other side, and then there's the truth. So arming yourself with these questions will allow you to have a stoic approach to say, listen, let me see a 35,000 foot view about my current situation, ask myself these questions, and then follow the best course of action and asking counsel for those who've been through the same situation to us before, and then you formulate your answer and you go through that situation with confidence and clarity knowing that God is with you. And here's one principle I'd love to incorporate upon you. You do not serve anyone, yourself, the people that you love and care about, your business, your career, your family, you do not serve anybody by complaining and by being broke. And that's why this year in 2022, if you haven't been shooken up yet by the last couple of years of this pandemic, I would encourage you to say, listen, you don't deserve to be broke, but you got to do your part. You don't deserve to be in pain, but sadly, a lot of us are in that situation. But you also have the instructions, you have the guidance, you've been given the encouragement and the strength to actually fight through the current situations. You just can't be in a position of isolation. By using these principles that many of you are out there seeking and searching, will now start to find and implement the things necessary to help you become a first generation cash flow millionaire. So before I let you go, please check out this video right here. 44 minutes of wisdom from other faith-based millionaires that we interviewed last year in 2021. So that being said, I would love to know your thoughts, your questions, your comments. Put it in the comment section below. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? You challenge me? No problem. Put it in the comment section below. So if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. So happy new year 2022 and welcome to this Sunday night's Wealth and Wisdom series for the next 30 weeks. We'll be doing this every Sunday night at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.